Hi, this is Steve Plach, and welcome to this edition of uh, Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, Nonprofit Spotlight is the production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television, and uh, we are now in a series of productions where we are highlighting uh, the great work done by uh, local nonprofits, and particularly how their missions are impacted by uh, sheltering place orders and uh, social distancing protocols and the like. And so we're really fortunate today to have uh, from the Association of Faith Communities and the Faith Community Shelter, the program manager, Debbie Bates. Debbie, welcome. Thank you, Steve. It's it's a pleasure. Well, it's a Thank pleasure you for having us. Yeah. Uh, for people who aren't familiar with your work, and really anybody who's involved with the sheltering uh, uh, in Santa Cruz should be, but let people know uh, a little bit about yourself and how you became involved with uh, with shelter management. Mm. Well, um, it's it was not my plan to become <laughs> involved with shelter management. Uh, I was a probation officer over in Santa Clara County for. 33 years and uh, retired in uh, 2001 and for several years um, was just relaxing, enjoying retirement and, uh -huh. uh, and doing my marriage and family therapy. I'm also uh, a marriage and family therapist. Right. And so just doing a little bit of um, therapy work and relaxing. And I heard in church that there was a need for a program manager for a shelter, a homeless shelter. And um, I was contemplating it and thinking about it and um, decided with a little bit of push <laughs> from a couple of areas uh, that, that it would be good to apply. And because they, my skill set kind of matched what the need mm -hmm. was. Yeah. And so I went ahead and applied and was accepted for the position. So I'm, I'm, and I've been thrilled ever since. Uh, I was hired in 2013 and um, kind of started keeping records uh, for the shelter at about 2014, middle of 2014, and uh, have been uh, blessed in a number of ways uh, to be the program manager. And of course, your skill set was uh, tested exponentially uh, a couple, three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. As we all know, uh, Homeless Services Center, now Housing Matters, had operated the uh, winter shelter every year. And yes. uh, up until uh, two or three years ago, they decided they really wanted, didn't want to assume that administrative burden anymore. And so the Association of Faith Communities took it over, and you became the manager of that much larger program for a time. That was a leap of faith for the nonprofit <laughs> yeah. and for myself as well. And um, we were the operational um, management for two years for the winter shelter. Um, and again, uh, just were called in ways that we're not even fully aware of in the moment. We're called to do things that... Um, that are meaningful, that are necessary, and and leap of faith is not um, understating it by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were a lot of challenges, the, uh, the, uh, and our effort with Winter Shelter was to take it out of isolation and to put it into community. Mm -hmm. The Association of Faith Communities. Um, drive is to really build community and so with winter shelter we took it in a new direction and placed it in the community and we had community involvement from a uh, volunteer church um, folks who brought in the meals for every single night for the four months and and that was an outreach that um, blessed many yeah, it uh, reflects the spirit of uh, generosity really in our community that uh, you're able to get so many folks to come in. And these are meals, full meals, gourmet meals prepared yeah. every night uh, for large groups of people. And uh, that's just a wonderful, wonderful work. And of course, yeah. the Association of Faith Communities has done so much over the last few years uh, in the way of being involved with helping the homeless, helping mm -hmm. people in need, helping the poor, working poor, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, also being the you know, one of the driving forces and providing shelter for folks. Yeah. One of the things that the AFC has now going is, of course, safe spaces, which we can touch on just briefly, which is their RV parking program before we get back to the faith community shelter. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that was uh, born out of the 
need that the faith communities, the county, the city, everyone sees with folks um, that are relegated many times not for um, desire, but because Mm -hmm. they're forced into it economically um, and they can't afford housing, they're forced to live in their cars. Uh, UCSC students, Mm -hmm. um, families, um, individuals that can't, you know, were evicted because of rent or because of health problems. Um, and many, many, many folks in the county are uh, subject to having to live in their cars. So this is an outreach that was born out of a great need. And of course, affordable housing being a dire need uh, here, as it is really elsewhere throughout the state and, and the country for that matter. And uh, people living in cars and vans and RVs, that's, that, that's the only uh, housing they can afford. Correct. And so having an opportunity really to have a safe place to park uh, yes. and a secure place to park and being able to at least uh, take that burden off them about worrying about uh, any kind of the enforcement problems. And so people can go on our website, afcsc.org. Is that uh, the website? And yes, can... afcsantacruz.org. Right, afcsantacruz.org. They can find it all they want to know about that really great program. But getting back to the Faith Community Shelter, which you are the manager uh, now for some time, that has been a rotating shelter. So yes. explain kind of how that has worked, and then we can talk about how uh, sheltering in place and uh, social mm-hmm. distancing, those mm-hmm. have impacted you know, the kind of further mm-hmm. of that mission. Sure. And the rotating shelter, it's, um, it has its own energy. What we do is rotate from night to night amongst uh, seven churches. And each night we're in a different church. And the uh, churches open their doors, open their floors, and then and be sheltered. And different church volunteers will join us for dinner, for meals, very much like the winter shelter mm-hmm. uh, configuration. Right. Um, the church folks bring in meals and then sit down with us and eat family style. And we're able to share stories, share resources, uh, build relationship. Um, and so the 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 good news of that is that relationship building and that community building. The difficulty is we still um, in the rotation are somewhat nomadic, and mm-hmm. and for a lot of people that's um, that is difficult. And w- the AFC currently is working on an effort to when we go back to rotation to see if we can get into a church for a week or a month at a time. Uh, So we won't have to be so nomadic and have to uh, allow folks to settle and to be in one spot for an extended period of time. And and that I think will be, um, I mean, a gift to all to be able to have a secure spot for a more extended period of time to be able to settle. And, of course, uh, you're not only the uh, manager of uh, the original uh, shelter, Rotating Shelter, which has been going on for some years, but now the AFC, through its efforts and through the cooperation of uh, churches in the area, have created a second shelter. And so there's actually yeah. a shelter A and a shelter B, so you're managing yes. two shelters simultaneously. <laughs> and <laughs> and 14 different uh, churches. So, <laughs> um, so we, yeah, it's, 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 it's a gift. I mean, it's, uh, uh-huh. it has its own difficulties and its own challenges, but it's really been a gift to be able to expand. I know with, through HEAP funding, um, we have been able to expand um, the numbers of people. We're up to, we can house uh, or shelter 40 individuals and families. We have been able to locate in two separate churches, one in Mid-County, one on the west side, uh, to be able to house 24-7 and shelter um, all of the individuals in both shelters. So we, um, we found it interesting in the first couple of weeks that moving from the kind of the more frenetic... Uh, and again, nomadic lifestyle uh-huh. of moving around um, is it did take a couple of weeks for individuals and families to settle into being in one spot. Right. And, and we were talking about it uh, on Monday night. We have a community meeting every week 
uh, with the staff and with the individuals um, in the shelter. And we were discussing that phenomenon that being in one spot felt a little odd. <laughs> um, and and it, uh, it actually has moved into a very um, helpful dynamic in terms of that stabilization that people need in order to move into the next phase of their lives, which is um, finding secure housing, finding what um, they can do work-wise. And we have found um, the results of being able to shelter in place has been that more individuals have gotten into, into uh, job situations. Ah. We've, we have found more mm -hmm. in both shelters, more individuals are working. Um, there is a more concerted effort to um, attach to and align with resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we have staff um, coordinators at the shelter that are able to sit with individuals on uh, laptops and on tablets uh, to be able to help link them with services. And that effort has helped folks move into the next step of their housing journey. And of course, one of the signature features of uh, the faith community shelter is its transitional nature. This is not emergency sheltering. Correct. This is transitional sheltering. You have Correct. really a marvelous record of uh, people who have been able to transition out of this program into uh, permanent uh, housing. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Yeah. Our uh, statistics, we are running about 31, 32 percent of those that come into the shelter are able to um, transition into a stable housing situation. Um, since 20, middle 2014, when I was keeping, started keeping statistics, we have been able to um, help launch 116 um, individuals and families into permanent housing, into more stable living situations. And that's a remarkable number, uh, considering really the dearth of affordable housing, the dire need for affordable housing mm -hmm. in Santa Cruz, and the sure. difficulties, I think, uh, with unsheltered people, many of whom are struggling with right. uh, financial situations or benefit situations or medical situations, right. to be able to get into more stable living situations. But Correct. Uh, now, the, the future, of course, uh, according to the county, may hold that uh, you'll be sheltering in place for some considerable time uh, yet uh, in these the two locations. Uh, what's uh, your view about that? We are looking at another six months um, of sheltering in place. That's the projection. Um, the, the effort is to shelter in place until there is a vaccine. Uh -huh. uh, so that it, that is the goal. Right. And um, we are moving both with the city and the county in terms of what might be available for the rotating for the faith community shelter rotating shelter to be able to shelter in place for that extended period of time mm -hmm. because churches are looking at reopening so our ability to stay in the churches is somewhat questionable right because and a lot of the as churches, churches open yeah, yeah. And a lot of the churches, uh, particularly the ones that uh, the Rotating Shelter uses, for instance, the Peace United, the Calvary Episcopal, have really very busy uh, activity schedules on their campuses normally when it's right. not sheltering in place, when there isn't social distancing, which is going to be, you know, as you say, lasting for quite some time. But they may want to get back to having more active activities on their mm -hmm. campuses. Yes. And most churches, um, large and small, have a very robust um, outreach and yeah. being able to provide space at either free or low cost for community involvement uh, does use up a lot of um, physical floor space. And it's really well worth mentioning that uh, the city, but particularly the county, has been extremely supportive of the sheltering system here in Santa Cruz mm -hmm. and really has been instrumental in helping the AFC do this work. It seemed to have kind of fallen uh, by default to the AFC to do a lot of this work, but the county has been very, very supportive mm -hmm. uh, in, in helping uh, the AFC do this wonderful work. We have been... Um, I, 
amazed really at uh, the collaboration that we have been able to build with the city and with the county. And in addition, especially through COVID, there has been much more of a unifying um, effort with the different service providers, with the shelter providers, with the county and the city stepping in and organizing uh, group involvement so that we're working towards the common goal and we are being respectful of the COVID protocols. And I know public health, mental health, uh, environmental health have all stepped in in a very dedicated, dramatic way to join together all the entities that are providing services to the homeless so that we're working in a unifying way and in a safe and um, considerate way for the virus and to keep people safe and healthy. And uh, certainly we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that uh, it really is, uh, in my experience anyway, the participants in this community themselves, the participants in the sheltering community, who have been so good about uh, taking uh, these uh, uh, social distancing and mm-hmm. protocols and so you know, so seriously that uh, the transmission rate amongst homeless people really mm-hmm. has been very minimal here in Santa Cruz County and extremely rare, if not, if not uh, completely absent, in the shelters for the, the faith community shelter. Right. We have had no, in, in our particular shelter, we have had no one that is symptomatic. We have had, and we do uh, daily, sometimes multiple daily uh, checks on symptoms. And, and it has been surprising to me how few of those in the homeless community have contracted the virus or have been symptomatic. I, I know the city, the county has been very dedicated to opening up the motels for those that are vulnerable mm-hmm. and those that um, could be symptomatic uh, to reduce and mitigate the effect on the others in the in the homeless community. Yeah. And yeah. of course, folks uh, who are interested in any of this, AFCSantaCruz.org, but uh, your capacity in each one of the shelters is uh, uh, 18. Is that uh, about right? We can go to 20 in each shelter. 20. 20. And you have some available spaces for people who might uh, be interested in this wonderful opportunity to kind of get themselves settled and, and bare feet on the ground and uh, getting ready for benefits and employment and maybe transitional into housing. Yes. And we have space available, not a lot, but we do have space available right now in both shelters. Well, it's wonderful. And uh, so uh, as we move forward kind of through the pandemic, uh, we're going to be uh, sheltering in place for some particular period of time. Uh, the, the county will continue to be supportive, as I understand it. Uh, they're supplying uh, not only a wonderful lunch, but also dinners every day. Yes. Lunch and dinners, we provide our own breakfast, uh, but uh, three meals a day. And the county, um, the co- we are also with the county working on a, a program to help have mental health, to have uh, resources, to have other service providers come into the various shelters and provide inreach. So that would um, even more um, encourage uh, folks to be able to to resource mm-hmm. benefits and to resource opportunities that they might have missed before. Yeah, yeah. well, it's a wonderful uh, opportunity for uh, folks who are unsheltered and really who need a little bit more stability in their lives to be able to uh, come to a place where they are supported and also are able to transition really back into employment benefits housing, Mm -hmm. as you and I both know from Mm -hmm. the census and surveys that are taken biannually. Uh, Almost uh, everybody you see on the street is eligible for some kind of help or some benefit. Oftentimes they can't get connected to it or they just aren't aware that they're eligible for that particular benefit. Correct. And and that is a big thrust of our program is to assist and come alongside all those that are in our program to make sure that they have as many of the resources available to them and that they're connected with as they need in order to help move them in uh, their journey towards housing. Absolutely. 
And of course, when the folks are there, uh, you, you have, uh, there's overnight monitoring, but there's also uh, your coordinators, uh, which I'm proud to say I'm one, who are there to really offer you know, the, the support and whatever, whatever service opportunities are available to the folks uh, who can really help transition through the period. I am so blessed to, to have a staff of coordinators that are engaged, that are passionate, um, that want the best for the clients that are in the program. And the ability for the coordinators to come in and sit with and mentor in many ways the progression for folks and to help, especially for those that are initially coming into the shelter to help folks stabilize. It, it has been um, revealed that many, many, many programs are finding that it takes about six months, um, four to six for folks that are coming from the trauma of being on the streets and being homeless to be able to settle into themselves in a way that they're recognizing their strengths and their abilities and um, to have that stability to move forward. So our coordinators and our monitor staff are key instruments in helping that stabilization. And of course, anyone who has uh, worked within the homeless community for any period of time understands that uh, uh, folks uh, who are unsheltered, they get, you know, some kind of uh, even transitional uh, residency and occupancy of some place. It's a transformative experience for them. Mm -hmm. It really changes their whole lives. It, yes. It's very simplistic to say, well, the answer to homelessness is to house everyone. But there is some truth in that. There's a kernel of truth in that. Absolutely. Um, I because it, being homeless is a traumatic experience and and there there is embedded trauma in being homeless even if you've lost a job and are only homeless for a, you know a few weeks or a few months that is destabilizing for anyone if you've had a health issue that's used up all your finances if you, i mean there's so many pictures of homelessness and there is not one view of who is a, a homeless individual and yeah. everyone experiences some level of trauma. And so to be able to be in a secure, safe environment with others who know your experience and also with others who are there to help you transition out of it yeah. is very healing, very healing. And so one thing that's uh, really changed the character of uh, the sheltering experience itself is that when you were rotating, you were talking about uh, uh, people in the church communities coming in and bringing the food. And as our good friend Mel Nunes says, to sit down and take a meal with somebody, share an experience, share a story with somebody, you know, share your support. And that is so key and important to the, the really the success of the program, you know, atmospherically at least. Yeah. That for me, walking in the first time that, I stepped into the shelter was for me transformational and to see church folks sit with um, those that are experiencing homelessness and to not feel a difference between the individuals sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very joining and normalizing experience to share what your day was like and what your um, similarities and commonalities are rather than your differences. And what we have found, and I know you've experienced this in the shelter um, coordinator position, to experience those church folks that have stepped in with house sitting um, opportunities, mm -hmm. with jobs, yeah. um, and, and with resources for just a mentoring kind of come alongside mm -hmm. and share your life journey. Right. It for, for all of us who work in this situation, it, it is transformative for us as well. Yeah. And when uh, the pandemic, and of course uh, there will be a light at the end of the tunnel at some point, and perhaps uh, you'll be able to go back to the rotating shelter system. I just mentioned as an aside that on one of the previous programs just recently, we had Susan True as the executive director of the Community Foundation of Santa Cruz County. 
and they were uh, hosting a night uh, mm -hmm. in their own dining shelter. And I mentioned that to Susan. I said, you know, they'll be back, so keep it on the place for it. So, <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for the we're promotion. The the truth. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate that, Steve. Thank you for for promoting and reminding folks. I appreciate and I, it. And I think it's, it is well that to, to remind and really to congratulate not only yourself, but the, the people uh, at the AFC, the board chair, John Showalter, some of the great people, Reverend Herb Schmidt, people who have done so much, uh, Joel Miller, people who have mm -hmm. done, you know, uh, really everything to take on the burden of helping people who are unsheltered. When uh, at one time uh, or another during the history of Santa Cruz, there's been very little of that support in the community. Mm -hmm. And yet the faith community itself has really stepped up and been, been the foundation stone for all of this. Correct. And the, the faith communities joining together <laughs> and being a part and in many ways a leader in the county and the city um, ha has been, for, for me, the faith community's um, effort and the calling that drive that is um, spiritually based to come alongside those that are struggling. Mm -hmm. And the, the, um, the, the, phrase that has come from Association of Faith Communities has been relieving suffering in a wildly ecumenical way. <laughs> and, wonderful. And, yeah. and I, I think that says it all. <laughs> well, that uh, certainly uh, has been the mission of this, uh, the Association of Faith Communities. It continues to be. Again, uh, it's well to mention that uh, people are interested in a safe it's a sparking program. Mm -hmm. They can go to the website, uh, afcsantacruz.org. People are interested in uh, the rotating shelter, which is now uh, now sheltering in place at a couple of different churches here. The faith community shelter uh, can go onto the website. Uh, we have about a minute left. Uh, anything you want to kind of say uh, to the folks uh, in, in terms of what uh, you're hoping for in the future mm -hmm. for, for, for sheltering folks in Santa Cruz and really meeting that need? Well, one thing that the Association of Faith Communities is moving towards is, is mentoring, is how do um, individuals come alongside that, that might or might not be in a faith community, um, but want to come and join alongside and help a person on their journey. Um, so the mentoring program is something that on the website I'm sure we're going to be promoting and building on. So just to plant that seed for individuals that might be watching is if you do want to help, reach out. Wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, thank you, Debbie, so much. Debbie Bates, Program Manager of Faith Community Shelters, a program of the Association of Faith Communities. Go to the website, afcsantacruz.org. Check all of this wonderful work out. And uh, thank you again so much for being with us, and we'll talk to you soon again. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure. Steve Bates, you're tuning in again, and we will see you next time.